Think about your favorite roller coaster. Now, what is it about the ride that makes it so good? Is it the layout, pacing, forces, theming, height, speed? Well, I would argue that what makes your ride so great is actually the scale. Now, my name is Drew Hastings, and let's break down what I mean by scale. So, I would argue that the ride does at least one thing better on a whole nother level than the other rides. So let's look at RMC lineup. So the world's best coaster, according to Vote Coasters by CoasterBot, is Steel Vengeance. I think that's pretty widely agreed upon in the coaster community. So the average height of RMC coasters is typically 139.6 feet. Steel Vengeance was their first big coaster, and it was a whole 65.4 feet taller than the average. So by having it be superior to the others just by the scale of it, they're able to provide a better ride and what is regarded as the best coaster in the world. Since Steel Vengeance is just so good, it's on a different scale than the others because it is larger. They're able to do more with it. The scale of that ride is more than the other RMCs. But it's not necessarily just about the size. It can also be about the statistics of a ride. So you look at rides like King Daka and Top Thrill Dragster. In terms of layout, they aren't really anything that special. It's a launch, you go up a top hat, you do a twisted drop, and then you're into the brake run. But the statistics of this ride is what makes it great. From a theme park point of view, if you look at B&M Gigas versus Hyper, you can market a Giga a lot more than you can a Hyper because a Giga is over 300 feet. Whoa, that's such a big coaster. As opposed to a Hyper, which is 200 feet, still big, but not quite as big. You get what I mean? The scale of the statistics can improve a ride. But what happens when a ride can't be built bigger? Like in terms of Alton Towers, where they have a height limit, they can't go above the tree line. Well, in those scenarios, parks can opt to increase the forces on a ride. A great example of this is Maverick at Cedar Point. So when Maverick first came out, there isn't a lot of marketability that you can do with this ride because it's low to the ground, its stats are just eh, it's okay. But what makes this ride insane is the scale that they take these elements at. So the pacing of the ride is insane, but also the transitions. They really went above and beyond with these transitions. They scaled them up, which makes them a lot better than other Blitz coasters, like, for instance, Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens. Another way that parks can increase the scale of a coaster is by their use of terrain. So, I know there are some parking lot coasters. Okay, Big Whoop is a flat plot of land, but you look at coasters like Outlaw Run, that take a whole lot of advantage of their terrain and it is something else. So Outlaw Run has a height of 107 feet but a drop of 162 feet. So the park didn't even have to build insanely big to get a larger drop just because they used the terrain. And I would also include location and scenery with this. So rides that go through the trees are typically regarded as better because they do this one particular aspect better than other coasters. Do you see what I mean with this whole scale thing? The better they can do one particular aspect, the better the coaster typically is. But even if we look at Disney parks, Disney's roller coasters aren't that good in terms of layout. I'm sorry guys, but they're just not. <laughs> But what makes their rides set out from the others is the theming. Disney is known for their theming because they're able to scale it up to a different level that other parks just can't compete with. So if you, we look at a ride like Expedition Everest, the layout isn't that great. It does have a backwards section, which was one of the first in the US, I believe, to do that. But the ride itself isn't all that. There's only one somewhat big drop, no big inversions, no record-breaking stats other than most expensive coaster, but at the same time, the scale of their theming 
went through the roof because it is the most expensive coaster, or it was at least until Hagrid's came along. What sets Expedition Everest apart is the scale of its theming. But there are other ways that a park can increase the scale of a ride to make it more attractive and appealing. So you look at unique aspects like a spinning coaster. Spinning coasters are wild, out of control experiences. Um, but if you look at something like Time Traveler, they take that to a whole nother level because they took a spinning car and stuck it on a typical mock rides layout. Or if we look at 4D coasters, especially things like X2 and Ijanaika, those things are beasts. They're insane because they do that spinning aspect in a way that isn't seen by anyone else. So the scale of theirs is a lot greater than other 4D coasters like the 4D free spins made by SNS. I don't necessarily think that scale is everything when it comes to a ride though. Um, you look at reliability of a ride that will greatly decrease the overall guest experience if they're not able to ride it. They go to the park, they're looking forward to ride the big new coaster and it's shut down. That will impact it. But then also there's other factors that impact guest experience of a ride. So like weather, the park atmosphere, the operations of a ride that kind of goes in hand with the reliability sometimes. So. I do think that scale has a large role to play in what actually makes a great coaster great. It is when a ride does one particular aspect better than the average that it typically sticks out. This can make a good coaster great. So if you look at things like Steel Vengeance, the scale of this ride is a lot more than the rest of their RMC coasters, especially in terms of just sheer size so there's a lot more that they can do with it. A ride like Storm Chaser can't compete with a ride like Steel Vengeance just because Steel Vengeance is on a completely different scale. So when you think about your favorite coasters, think what makes this ride so great. Is there one particular aspect that this ride does better than the others? So let me know what you guys think of this video. Do you agree or disagree? I hope that I was able to convey my ideas in a way that makes sense. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe and leave a like. I plan to make more videos like this in a more video essay format. Thank you so much for watching. Go live an enthused life and God bless.